In this series of short screencasts, I want to show you how you can solve a pedigree really fast by asking two simple questions. Firstly, is there anyone in the pedigree who has a phenotype that's different to the phenotype of both their parents? And secondly, are there any girls with the recessive phenotype who have either a father or a son with the dominant phenotype? If you haven't already watched the videos that I made earlier showing how to solve pedigrees using a four hypothesis method, I'd really encourage you to do that first. That's really a better way of solving pedigrees. It's more reliable. You're less likely to make a mistake doing it that way. But sometimes when you're under pressure, you just want to get to the answer really quickly. Well, this method will show you how you can do that in a matter of mere seconds. The first thing that we need to do is look at the pedigree and say, is there anyone in that pedigree who has a phenotype that's different to the phenotype of both their parents? And you should be able to see if you look at this pedigree that yes, there is. This girl here has, she has, she's shaded. She has whatever the trait is that we're talking about. Neither of her parents are shaded. So her phenotype is different to the phenotype of both her parents. That shows us that she has the recessive phenotype, and therefore anybody in the pedigree who isn't shaded must have the dominant phenotype. Because in this pedigree, or any pedigree for that matter, we're really interested in the individuals that are shaded. They're the ones that have whatever trait it is that, that we're talking about. We now know that in this pedigree, the shaded individuals have the recessive phenotype, so we can right away eliminate X-linked dominant and autosomal dominant as possibilities. So we've just narrowed the field by 50% just by asking that simple question. That still leaves us with X-linked recessive and autosomal recessive as possible modes of inheritance. So how do we tell whether this is X-linked or autosomal? In order to do that, we first need to identify all the girls in the pedigree who have the recessive phenotype. There are three of them. Um, this girl, obviously, which is the one that we've just worked out, um, but also this girl here has the recessive phenotype, and this girl has the recessive phenotype too. And we ask ourselves our second question, which is, are there any girls who have the recessive phenotype that have a father or a son with the dominant phenotype. Let's have a look. Well, there's actually a number of them. Uh, this girl has a father with the dominant phenotype. This girl has a son with the dominant phenotype. This girl has both a father with the dominant phenotype and a son with the dominant phenotype. So there's, in fact, four pieces of evidence here. There are four girl, four examples of a girl with the recessive phenotype having a father or a son with the dominant phenotype. What that proves, we only need one piece of evidence to prove this. We've got four. But what that proves is that this cannot be an X-linked trait. It cannot be an X-linked trait. And so therefore, it must be an autosomal trait recessive trait. The reason it proves that, if we just look at this, this girl down here and perhaps her son, the reason it proves that it's not X-linked is because if it was X-linked, it's not, we've proved that it's not, but if it was X-linked, then on each of her X chromosomes, she would have to have the allele for that recessive trait. She would have to be homozygous in order to have the recessive trait. That's what recessive means, right? Now, when she has a son, she gives her, one of her X chromosomes to her sons. So she's going to give a an allele for that recessive trait to this son. His other sex chromosome is a Y chromosome that comes from his father. That's what made him a boy. That's fine. That's exactly what we'd expect to see. But this boy over here, he obviously gets a Y chromosome from his father. That's what made him a boy. His only X chromosome comes from his mother. That's true of all boys. All boys only have one X chromosome. It comes from their mother. But somehow he seems to have 
the allele for the dominant trait because he's not shaded in. Well, how did he get that when his mother has only got recessive alleles? Okay, it just doesn't work out. And so therefore, it can't be X-linked. Okay. Similarly, if we were to look at um, at a girl, this this girl here again, her, her genotype would have to be little a, little a. Um, she couldn't have a father like this either because she gets an X chromosome, obviously, from each parent. She could get one from her mum. That's fine. Her mum, in fact, must be the same as her. But where does she get that second X chromosome from? It comes from her father, who's only got one X chromosome. For her to have two copies of that recessive allele, her father must have one of them, and yet clearly he doesn't. So it can't possibly, it just doesn't work out. So we've been able to solve this pedigree, work out that it, it must be a recessive trait because there are, there's at least one person in the pedigree who has a phenotype that's different to both their parents. And then we've been able to prove that it can't be X-linked because we've found girls there who have the recessive trait who have either a father or a son that doesn't have the recessive trait or that has the dominant trait.